Okay, once again, hello and welcome to the Sky Digital Marketing Quarterly Trends Report for Q3 of 2024. As always, we start off with some housekeeping information. You are in listen-only mode. You can try to talk back to me. I will not hear you, but we do have a Q&A button uh, in the webinar control panel. We will have some time for questions at the end of the hour. And uh, there's also a chat function. So if you're having sound issues, you can talk to us there. Or um, if you're having sound issues, you may want to switch between your, your mobile phone and your computer. And uh, if you go into that chat window, the, the link to the slides is there. So you can download it during the webinar. Um, otherwise, you will get the slides. You will get a link to the recording via email by end of day tomorrow. So keep an eye on your inbox for that. As always, I am Chris Costello. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing Research here at Sky and I've been at this for over 10 years now, um, based here in Chicago. Uh, we obviously have offices all over the world, but I am here in the Midwest. Um, as for Sky, who are we? We are the only omni-channel platform designed for performance advertising. We connect walled garden media and complex data so you as marketers can unlock insights you can streamline the ex execution of your programs and you can measure the impact all in one place on some of the highest engagement, highest return, return consumer touch points. You see some of the logos down there on the publishers and retailers that we support. We do a lot of research here at Sky. You can go to sky-research-center um, off of the sky.io site and you can read all about it. We posted in the last couple of weeks on Amazon Big Deal Days their uh, October iteration of Prime Day. But you can find advertising trends like the things we're talking about now, consumer surveys about Amazon ads, walled gardens, holiday spending, and that kind of thing. Uh, marketer insights. We do an annual state of retail media survey where we talk to practitioners within the space about what they're seeing, which is uh, very helpful and very insightful. And then we have a big kind of open white space for custom research. If you've got something you need, just ask. We might be able to help. A word about the data we will talk about today. This is drawn from uh, an overall population of over a trillion impressions, 14 billion clicks, over 8.6 billion in annual spending. Uh, we do this across five quarters, across multiple countries and industry categories. Um, to be included in this analysis, it's based on Sky accounts with 15 consecutive months of spending within each of our major marketing channels, unless otherwise noted. Uh, sometimes other outliers are removed as necessary. And it's important to uh, emphasize that this is spending based on our clients only. It is not necessarily representative of the entire channel or an entire publisher. So please keep that in mind as you uh, as you interpret and digest it these results. And what results might those be? Here's our agenda for the next hour. We'll talk about, you know, some high level key findings. Then we'll get into an analysis of each of our major channels. That's retail media, paid search, and paid social. And then we'll wrap up. I'll, I'll recap what we talked about. There'll be some time for Q&A, and then we'll have, uh, we'll list out some additional resources. Rather than have a separate section for commerce media, Commerce media is kind of everywhere now within the digital media ecosystem. So I put this handy dandy little shopping cart on the slides where we do touch on more commerce topics across channels. So keep an eye out for that. So let's get into it, shall we? Our key findings for the quarter. What did we see? Now, our main peg that we like to start with is where spending growth is or where ad, ad spending lives relative to last quarter and last year. And we did see spending growth across channels continue to rise. And that's despite some moderation in ad price inflation. Um, rising ad prices has been a major story through the first half of the year, but we have seen that start to pull back. We'll go into that in much more detail. Retail media, we saw clicks rebound. Uh, we saw a spike in click volumes that allowed retail media spending to maintain the robust growth rates we've seen over time, despite some of those slower CPC increases. A little bit different in search and in social, 
For search, CPC grew enough to keep things positive year over year, despite a small drop in clicks. And then for social, we saw enough of a, of a jump in impressions to offset was actually a slightly lower year over year CPM. So talking about spending growth by channel and then for the leaders in each channel here, you can see retail media, that healthy plus 28% year over year number, Amazon just a hair above that, but still rounding down to plus 28. Um, search and social, I would characterize as generally flat. Um, search was up 3% year over year in terms of spending, Google right on that number. And for paid social, we saw overall paid social at plus five. And we saw Meta in particular being flat year over year. Um, now, some of that is, if you're familiar with Sky, you know that we do emphasize performance media. Performance media translates to kind of heavy lower funnel activity. And that's not really where the action has been for social in the middle of the year. And we'll talk about that a little more. And then there's some other little uh, peculiarities to our data to help contextualize particularly that number on Meta. So over time, we can look at our year-over-year uh, -year growth compared to what we saw through the rest of 2024. Uh, retail media was the only channel that we saw an acceleration. We saw 21% last quarter and up to 28% this quarter, where in paid search and paid social, it was a deceleration. It was still growth, but less than we've seen in the first half of the year. Some of that is what the financial community, community calls tough comps. I think we started to see some of the acceleration at this time last year. So it's a little harder to, to pop up over it. And then in paid social, it's also challenged by volatility across non-meta publishers. And again, that heavy lower funnel representation, but it still helps from a directional point of view. I know a lot of uh, people who watch the industry were expecting in particular meta spending to slow down this quarter. So it's just a matter of to what degree. I'd also point out that in the past, retail media has not included things like Amazon DSP and Walmart DSP. Um, upon further reflection and based on some of the way that conversion attribution works, we've decided to combine them going forward. So that might add a little bit of extra juice, but not too much to that retail media number compared to what we saw last quarter. I did the math. It doesn't really change things all that much for if we did what we did did this quarter or last quarter for retail media. But I want to talk about that pricing versus volume equation. So here you see for each of our channels, you see spend, you see the primary volume metric. So that's clicks for retail media and search, impressions for social, and then cost per click for retail media and search, and then cost per thousand impressions or CPM for social. So retail media, you can see that a very large growth in uh, click volume, despite only about a 2% increase in CPC. So, you know, clicks really doing a lot of the driving there. Search and social, a bit more of a trade-off. Clicks you saw actually decrease year over year for paid search, but that increase in CPC, again, as I mentioned earlier, was enough to drive spending higher year over year, even if just in the low single digits. Social, we saw impressions actually pick up the slack because CPM was down. Um, and in the next slide, we'll see more about that, that long-term trend on CPM, but that did allow overall social, this is all social pubs, um, up about 5% year over year in terms of spend, which is the dark blue bar. Now, over time, you know, I mentioned in the first half of this year, year we heard a lot about rising prices. And this is a long-term view of all the year-over-year -year pricing numbers that we've published as Sky in our quarterly trends reports going back to Q1 of, of 2022. And you can see a pretty clear pattern. Um, most of those were decreasing through late 2022 in halfway through 2023, but accelerating in through that time to the point where earlier this year in, in uh, Q1 of 2024, Everything was was trending positive in terms of prices. And then things started to moderate. You know, you see that growth rate come down for retail media and search, although it's still positive now. But you see after two quarters for CPMs being uh, positive in terms of year over year growth, we're seeing them flip back negative. So that's kind of the long term trend. I think this is we talked about it a lot last time. There is a cyclical nature to this. As prices go higher, marketers buy less. Um, you know, some of this can be then aided by structural changes, but 
for the most part, you know, we as a community find ways to to deal with those higher prices, whether it's targeting, uh, day parting, you know, there are numerous, numerous tools at your disposal to help keep that in check. And as you do that, you start to see those prices come back down as the market kind of corrects for it. In each of our major channels, I want to talk about some of the new formats and features. They're maybe not quite as new as they used to be, but they are still driving growth. Um, and they're driving growth in very particular ways. A lot of these um, new developments have to do with reaching potential uh, customers in different parts of their customer journey. For example, for retail media, Amazon DSP has been a big driver. You see 63% year-over-year growth there, and that's really a, an effort to reach shoppers farther up the purchase funnel, maybe more in the consideration phase or even the awareness phase. For paid search and paid social, it's a little bit different. There, you're taking some of the lower funnel tactics, Performance Max on Google and Microsoft is a heavily shopping-driven format, although not exclusively so, as we'll see later, and Advantage Shopping Campaigns, it's, it's right there in the name. But what we see from each of these is that um, Google, Microsoft, Meta are trying to reach their audiences across the multitude of placements. So not necessarily um, segregated into a shopping specific area of the sites, but you know, for, for Google, that's reaching people on YouTube, that's reaching people in the, the discovery feed um, all over. Same thing with, with Meta. Uh, you know, as these platforms develop into wider varieties of experiences, these are now the publisher's efforts to reach customers in a consistent way across those. And you see that they are growing much faster than the overall channel in every case. I mentioned going up the funnel and emphasizing down the funnel, and we can separate that out. What we've started doing here at Sky is segmenting by uh, campaign goals, other signals to figure out if you're kind of upper funnel, middle funnel, lower funnel. And so we wanted to look at how year-over-year -year spending growth varied by those, those funnel designations. So here we've combined upper and middle funnel into the light blue bar on the right of each cluster, and then lower funnel on the left. And you can see retail media actually grew faster in the upper and middle funnel. And with that growth of, of Amazon DSP, that's not entirely surprising. Um, for paid search, we saw a little more action in the lower funnel. Uh, Performance Max is one of the things that's driving that versus upper and middle funnel. And then for paid social, despite Amazon or Advantage Shopping Plus coming to the fore, we've seen more activity in the upper and mid or middle funnel. We've seen that growing faster. And some of that is, I'd say, an artifact of how the objectives underneath Meta have changed over time. I think the timing of those changes have allowed for an emphasis on upper funnel activity. But this is consistent with some of what we saw in this last year in that you see upper funnel grow in the middle of the year, but then the lower funnel kind of comes comes back home in Q4. And we'll see some some data around that as well that, that shows how the behavioral elements compare to the structural elements when you look in, in a more short-term short basis. So those are our high-level findings. Let's now start to dive into retail media. At a glance, we saw retail media bounce back from a slightly softer Q2 um, Amazon Prime Day was definitely a factor. And in fact, Amazon Prime Day posted more ad spend from Amazon advertisers than Black Friday, uh, which is something. Um, we do see that fairly consistently. It kind of each of those tent poles gets progressively higher with, with the exception of Amazon uh, Big Deal Days. But once again, check the blog for that. That happened in Q4, so I'm not going to talk about it quite so much. And as we said before, we saw 28% year-over-year growth in retail media spend. And, and that rebound in clicks really was, it was soft for Amazon last quarter, and it kind of bounced back this, this quarter. So 24% increase year-over-year -year for Amazon in particular on clicks. And we've already started to do this, but I like to break down spending growth into volume versus pricing. So when we break that down, when we unpack that, we see impressions, clicks, spending all up in that mid 20% growth range where CPCs kind of only rose 2% overall, 4% for Amazon. This is a number that had been in double digits 
for the last several quarters. So that means that Q3 growth was almost entirely due to this increased volume with impressions and clicks growing at those comparable rates, CPC being less of a factor. Another way we like to look at this is not so much how much did it go up, but for how many clients, for how many accounts, for how many advertisers did the needle move in one direction or the other? Um, you can see on spending, still a majority uh, increasing at least 5%, both quarter over quarter and year over year. Um, a little bit more mixed on CPCs. We see, yeah, more went up than went down. But if you look at that quarter over quarter number, this is where the the inflation uh, theme comes back. You know, there's about a quarter of advertisers then in the that tiny little gray sliver at the zero point, which is less than 5% in, in either direction. So that kind of screams out that prices are not rising sequentially as we've seen in the past. So this is a good thing for, for advertisers. Um, this means you've got a little more you know, flexibility with how you're spending your, your dollars. If we break things out by month, you can see that July bigger than uh, November here. And in fact, the two days of Prime Day for Amazon advertisers spent more in those two days than the entire Cyber Five in 2023. But again, this is kind of a cyclical pattern. We do see that kind of you know, can you top this from one to the next kind of every year? Um, but that also was a big part of why we saw that that higher growth because July, you know, 34% year over year versus a little more modest mid 20s in both August and September. Next, we've already covered a lot of these numbers, but I also have the quarter over quarter growth there on the right. And this is for folks who like a good data table. I know you're out there. Um, but you, again, we we covered a bunch of this, but you can see impressions, clicks, kind of flat quarter over quarter. We do see a little bit of, of quarter over quarter inflation, plus 6% overall. And that kind of helped drive that sequential send, spend up by 9% quarter over quarter. One of the other things we like to look at is in the face of rising spend and not so much this time, but in the past rising CPCs, what's happening on the back end? What's happening with conversions? Uh, we have a bit cleaner data on Amazon conversions. So when we talk about conversion volume and conversion rate, we like to focus there. And here you can see that conversion rate grew faster than CPC did. So that allows conversion volume to grow faster than both clicks and spending. Now, DSP may affect these numbers somewhat as we bring it in because DSP has a maybe a little bit of a, a broader definition of on conversion attribution, but for the most part, I you know this does represent what's going on, and we do see that that increase. More broadly, we can look at conversion value, which we sometimes call you know advertiser sales revenue or what have you, and then your return on ad spend. And as we've seen in previous quarters, these increases in spending have not resulted in any material change to ROAS. ROAS is the same year over year, um, very little change there. And so despite this rapid growth within retail media, we do not seem to have hit any point of diminishing returns. We probably will at some point, but at this point, we don't know necessarily when that point even could be, um, but it is still in the future. And that's still, um, you know, positive for advertisers in the space to be able to ramp up their programs without getting, uh, without seeing their, their returns come back down. Whenever we talk about uh, spending growth, we like to try to unpack what's driving it. Um, I've done this a bunch of different ways in the past, and I'm trying. I'm always trying to find better ways to explain it. You can let me know if this is a better way, um, but you can kind of see, as an example, I want to talk about DSP. And you see on the left just your spending chart for DSP. So, hey, it grew 63% year over year. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Well, one of the ways that we can we can unpack that is to look at a waterfall chart. So the waterfall chart on the left, you read from left to right. And then Amazon DSP, you can see the, the whole thing cumulatively gets to that plus 28%. And you can see how much each of these different components um, add to that. 
So here we see 7% of the 28% is coming from Amazon DSP. So in the particular case of retail media, this gives us a couple ways to figure out what's driving growth. You can say what drove a lot of growth, but also where did it drive, what segment drove more of the growth than its share of total spending? And this is useful in uh, retail media because pretty much everything's growing. It's just at different rates. So here we have uh, several different segments and their levels to see what's contributing to overall spending change. You see the total at the top. Um, you see, you know, the, the usual suspects. Sponsored products is driving a lot of, of growth. Lower funnel is driving a lot of growth. CPG is driving a lot of growth. The Americas region. Um, top spenders. One of the other things we're trying to do to evolve our analysis here is look at behavior. So rather than say this category versus that category, we'll take, you know, the top 25% by total spend over five quarters, um, compare that to the middle two quarters. So between 25 and 75%, and then the bottom 25, we left bottom 25, the bottom quartile off here, cause it doesn't really move the needle that much. But then the other thing is I've highlighted three different, uh, levels here. We already talked about DSP where you're up 7%, um, and compared to, and that's 25% of the total compared to only making up like 13% of the total share of the of spending. So that's kind of a high ratio. And you see that DSP was 1.9x the actual share of spend. EMEA, you know, Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa was one and a half times bigger than its uh, its share of spend. And then upper funnel strategies, again, that's our DSP uh, segment coming home to roost again. And so these segments may not have contributed the most to growth, but they are punching above their weight. So this gives us uh, some interesting insights. Now, when we talk about other channels, we'll look at this a little differently because again, with, with retail media, it's very much, you know, the Chicago improv comedy model of yes. And I think in some of the other channels, we'll see it's, it's either, or, so we'll see how that shows up later. We also like to look at CPCs. I, have done this as a bubble chart in the past, but the bubble chart was really crowded. Uh, so I just kind of looked at, you've got your Q3 2024 CPC on the left. You can see what costs more than other things. And then you've got the change in CPC on the right. Um, so some of the things you can get from this CPG ad prices are both higher than average and grew more than average. Uh, middle and upper funnel strategies saw are lower priced overall. Um, you do see a big drop in, in DSP C CPCs. We'll show that in a little more detail a little bit later. Now I want to focus a little bit on Walmart. And once again, emphasizing that this is just Sky clients on Walmart. This is not the a fully accurate rep representation of the entire publisher. Um, but you can see we break it out by total. The blue bar, you know, up actually more than the average. That blue bar is north of plus 30%. I think it's plus 31 overall. And you can see that, you know, sponsored products grew a little more than sponsored brands. Sponsored brands did have a big spike in Q4 2023. So we will keep an eye on that as we get through the holiday season. Focusing a little more on sponsored brands, we can look at adoption of those levels. And it behaves a little, some, a little differently than Amazon. I think Amazon sponsored brands are just a little more mainstream in terms of inclusion. Uh, here it's, you know, maybe, or it's just north of 60% in terms of accounts using it, but you see the percent of spend down around 15%. Um, so that does point to maybe a, uh, a bit more of a traditional upper funnel role, but again, your, your mileage may vary and the overall may vary as well. If we break this down by ad type in terms of CPC, we see that those sponsored brand ads actually command a higher premium over sponsored product ads. This may change if you look at it on a CPM basis. If you do want to look at that as more of a traditional upper upper funnel uh, play, then that comparison may change. But here you can kind of see it's kind of consistent, um, both of them growing year over year and both of them down slightly quarter over quarter for Walmart. We can do the same for Amazon. Amazon will, will include uh, our DSP segment. We'll also include sponsored display on that side. Um, and you can see clearly that DSP has grown faster than the other ad types. It is, in fact, the second largest uh, segment of share by spend. 
Um, these are kind of ordered from left to right in terms of overall size. So sponsored products, the largest, then DSP, then sponsored brands, which includes sponsored brand video and sponsored display. Let's zero in on that DSP uh, segment. And you can see here that, you know, over a third, almost uh, two out of 10, almost four out of 10, two out of five. I, I can math on the fly like that. Um, but you do see that that a healthy number of accounts are using DSP. This does include connected TV ads on Prime Video. Um, and that is, I think, part of the CPC change that we'll see on the next slide. And then as a share of spend, it's almost one out of every uh, $5 across the Amazon ecosystem going to DSP. If we look at our CPC by ad type, most of the most of them kind of hang around together and move in unison. You do see uh, sponsored brands is more expensive here as well, followed by sponsored products and then sponsored display. And then you see DSP was much more expensive last year, but then has kind of come back down into the range of some of the others this year. What changed this year? Well, for one, Amazon DSP is where um, a good, a healthy portion of the Amazon Prime connected TV ads live. And if you remember back in January, Amazon Prime uh, defaulted to the ad supported tier for all users. So that kind of changed the game for how those were valued clearly. Um, we don't separate out connected TV just yet. We're hoping to be able to do that uh, sometime in the future. And now breaking things out by industry. Industry is a little boring for Amazon because, or for retail media rather, because everything went up. Um, so it's a matter of degree. And you can see that, you know, computers and consumer electronics went up despite CPCs going down, apparel, kind of the same deal. Um, and you do see up and to the right, you see our uh, CPG categories. Um, if we do our exercise from before, where we look at the contribution to growth those beauty and personal care, food and groceries and health all played uh, large roles in driving that overall uh, growth of the channel. And that we looked at it in terms of how CPG as a whole did that as well. So this is consistent with what we saw that. There's a little more variation around CPC, several categories seeing more than a 10% increase and then apparel growing, again, growing spend nearly 20% despite those CPCs dropping almost 40%. Where are there C those CPCs, you ask? Or if you don't ask, I'm going to pretend you ask anyway. Um, you do see a split among those CPG categories. Beauty and personal care and health are priced a little higher. Food and grocery uh, pr priced lower than the overall average. Um, some of this can be a function of which retailers are heavier in those categories and are maybe systematically different in terms of their, their pricing scheme. Um, but you, do, you can't get away of the land. You do get some clustering. You see that home and garden hobbies and leisure, business and industrial, which is a lot of office supply, that kind of thing down there with food and groceries and that kind of lower priced cluster. And now, because I've started doing this to look at pricing, I wanted to start doing two different views of long-term trends because we've been doing this for a long time at Sky and there's some benefit to looking at the historical context of these numbers. So this is what our top line year over year numbers were for clicks in the uh, dark blue bar, CPC, the light blue bar, and then spend, the kind of the red line. Um, and what you can get from that is that CPCs, if you look at just the, the right side of the chart, you can see that light blue bar from, you know, Q early 2023. In Q3 of 2023, CPCs abruptly went positive and clicks dropped. So what we're seeing now is with we're one year past that. So we're starting to see clicks able to move the needle again while there's maybe less headroom for CPCs to grow because of that big growth that we saw last year. But here you can kind of get a good sense for that cyclical nature I talked about of uh, volume versus pricing and what that does for spending overall. And then the other way that we can look at long-term trends is you know, over the course of time, we end up with five different measures of every quarter. If we average those together, we can get a sense of long-term growth. And that long-term growth is, you know, 8x spending um, per quarter of what we saw in the beginning of 2019. But we also see very, very clearly how that CPC curve has kind of flattened out since Q3 of 2023. There's a little bit of a dip in Q1 of 2024, but that does look like a bit of an outlier. 
So that's it for retail media. Uh, we're going to take a hydration break because otherwise I will definitely lose my voice by the end of this and we'll get on with paid search in just a moment. Okay, let's get back at it. Paid search Q3 at a glance, as we mentioned earlier, spending on paid search grew 3% over last year, and that's about half as fast as the last two quarters. Prices continued to increase year over year, but at a slower rate. And then clicks shrank slightly, actually the same rate that we saw last quarter of down 2%. So unpacking that number, that plus 3%, we saw 6% increase in impressions. We saw a 3% increase in in or a 6% increase in impressions, down 2% on clicks, as I mentioned, at CPC up 5%. So while CPC still increased year over year, it did not do as much as last quarter. And that could be some moderation. Uh, this could signal continued moderation of those price increases. Uh, but then clicks were still negative. So the end result was slower growth. Um, that CPC growth, still branded keywords is one of the areas that we've seen actually popping out there. Um, just as a bit of an, that's just a bit more of an anecdotal bit. I don't think we have a slide on that, but that's one of the reasons we saw CPC grow in addition to some of that transition from performance, from smart shopping to performance max. Looking at our distribution, a slight majority of, uh, accounts in our system saw year over year increases in spend, um, a little bit narrower on, it looked pretty even on quarter over quarter as, as likely to be up as down. We'll show you the quarter over quarter aggregate numbers in a second. But again, on quarter over quarter CPC, there's another 25% of accounts that saw no change, um, along with that 36% who saw a CPC drop of more than 5%. So this does signal that that price inflation does seem to be moderating. Now, some of that is is does seem to be supply and demand from advertisers. Um, you know, if clicks are more expensive, you're going to buy fewer of them. You're going to figure out how to do that. Um, we're good at that. We've been doing it for years. Breaking things out by month, um, I highlighted August to September here because you see July was up 4%, August up 3%, and September only up 1%. There was a little bit more lift last year. There was a 4% increase from August to September, or a 6% increase, excuse me. Uh, last year from August to September, but it was only 4% this year. So that's, you know, one of the reasons we didn't see quite as much lift off. Um, you know, there are some, you have a bunch of hypotheses as to why that may be the case. There may have been something specifically and structurally going on, but also, you know, when you consider that uh, Thanksgiving is later this year. So maybe that, that pull through of holiday spending is deferred just a little bit. Um, and that can make a difference when you're talking about September and October numbers. Looking at our core trends, this is for folks who like to see the numbers themselves, but then on the right, you do have your, your quarter over quarter change and your year over year change. Um, I did mention that quarter over quarter, things were pretty flat. You do see spending actually down 2%. That's kind of normal. Uh, Q2 to Q3 is generally not much change. The one place we did see some change was on uh, impressions. Impressions down 10%, but then click through rate up 8%, which means you're not losing the customer so much as you're just not showing them as many ads. And one of the the reasons for that does seem to be that performance max may be starting to chip away at standard shopping. It's already fully replaced um, smart shopping at this point. But, you know, if, if Google has their druthers, they'd like to see that, you know, expand into other areas as well. And, and standard shopping is one of those areas that's kind of ripe for, for that transition. Speaking of performance max, we're once again going to give an example of how we use these waterfall charts to figure out what's going on and what's really moving the needle. Um, and here, performance max grew 49%. But then if you look on the right, it accounted for 5% of growth. So more than the overall 2.7, um, you know, rounding up to 3% year over year. So here, rather than looking at, you know, there we look at the share of, of spending, but here, the share of change is more than than 100%. So it starts to get a little weird when you do that. So here, looking at the actual contribution to year-over-year -year growth is more relevant. And you start to see what I alluded to when we were talking about retail media, that some stuff moves to the right, some stuff moves to the left. So you do have more trade-offs here. Um, you know, you see performance max 
branded keywords growing in terms of spend, but then you see standard shopping and non-branded keywords dropping. Um, you see revenue and conversions as your bid strategy targets, revenue especially, and that's that lower funnel activity uh, that we talked about really kind of growing faster than than other elements, than, than even the, the entire channel. But then our cost-conscious bidding is pulling back, which again, you would expect. Uh, we talked about quartiles of spending. We can also do quartiles of CPC. So the the top 25% of accounts based on their actual CPC, we saw, you know, greater than average growth. We saw, you know, between three and 4% growth there where your low CPC, which is your bottom quartile, your moderate CPC, which is your middle two quartiles were both down slightly. Um, tech and services actually had a, a fairly strong quarter. Um, consumer goods and retail still grew, just not as much. And then also local versus enterprise. When we talk about local search, it's about, um, it's kind of a broad proxy for SMBs, other multi-location businesses. It does not include, for example, Google Maps ads, um, which generally get binned as local search and other, other ways of looking at it. And then looking at our actual CPCs and how much they change. To the surprise of no one, the high CPC bucket has the highest CPC. That's a nice uh, reassurance that we're doing this the right way. Um, but you can kind of see that Performance Max had the, the largest year-over-year -year increase in CPC across campaign types, um, even as those prices were lower than branded keywords and non-branded keywords. Um, here you can kind of see some of what I was talking about with... Uh, with that branded keywords jump was up 22% year over year. And then you can see some of the other, uh, you know, for the cost-based stuff, we saw it go down, et cetera, and so on. But turning our attention back to Performance Max, we do like to track how things are uh, playing out here on the Google side. Um, Microsoft does have this, but it's a little, it's less of an impact. So. We'll start to fold that in over time, but it doesn't really move the needle all that much. Um, overall adoption did grow from 51% to 59%. Um, spending share, however, not changed. One of the reasons that we is we see that on the right, that CPC kind of tailed down a little bit from Q2 to Q3. So that was a bit of a headwind in terms of the spending growth. Um, the adoption is kind of exactly what we would expect to see from Q2 to Q3 as advertisers prepare for the holiday season. For search in particular, you know, you can set that up, which means you're doing it. And, you know, we see a non-zero amount of activity because there are some people searching for some of those terms, but perhaps not at the volumes they will in Q4. This will be different than what we'll see with advantage shopping on the social side in just a couple of minutes. I had mentioned earlier as well that Pmax is still primarily shopping, but not exclusively shopping. And one of the ways we can look at that is by, you know, lifting the hood under what the assets are underneath. And those are generally broken down to images, shopping, text, or video. And you can see on the left that the, the majority of spend is coming from shopping, but at the same time, CPCs are a little lower. So if you looked at the share of impressions or clicks, it would likely be higher for shopping. In fact, next time, instead of a pie chart, maybe I'll do some 100% uh, stacked bars for that. And then our industry view. Uh, here we see, you know, a couple things stretching things out in, in every direction. We've got tech and telecom out there to the right. So they saw a large increase in CPC, that's your, your x-axis, without any real effect on spending levels. That's your y-axis. They're still pretty close to the zero point there. Um, health was different in that it didn't really have much as much of a change in CPC, uh, but it did see an increase in spend. And then kind of continuing to go around counterclockwise, jobs and EDU saw lower spend, but or lower CPC, but not that much difference in spend. And then finance saw lower spend, but a bit of a positive change in CPC. Everything else kind of clustered out in the middle there. As to where those CPCs are, health is actually starting to catch up. Uh, the y-axis here is the current CPC. Health is starting to catch jobs and EDU as one of the, the real premium uh, segments within our, our sample here. And then you see the those other clusters, tech and telecom, finance, B2B goods and services, and then everything else kind of clustered down around that average on the lower end. Uh, CPG, consumer goods and retail, obviously uh, higher 
consumers of shopping ads, which tend to be lower priced. One of the reasons why we see that behavior. And let's put it up on the big board for the year over year trends. Here you can kind of see, and one of the things, uh, the reason you know I talk about how these things move in opposition is first, it's glaringly obvious. Um, you know, you see those click bars up when the CPC bars are down and vice versa. But the net result is that spending does tend to stay consistent. The, the red line here doesn't move all that much because you do have these opposing factors. Sometimes one of one of those, you know, pricing versus volume, they'll get a little bit ahead of the other and you'll see a little bit more upwards or downwards pressure on pricing. But by and large, in a mature market, they tend to offset. And then if we do our, our compounded trends, you can kind of see a uh, similar CPC growth pattern to last year. We see kind of an increase through the year, then it drops off into Q1, then starts growing again. Uh, the Q3 number here might be a little bit hot because there's only one measurement. Um, it's not averaged out across, you know, four or five different uh, reports as some of the other ones are. But again, a good uh, a good measure to where we are in the longer term. That concludes the paid search part of our program. We'll move on to paid social in just a minute. Okay, so what happened in paid social in Q3? Fundamentally, we did see spending growth decelerate, both overall and for meta. Um, you see at the bottom, plus 5% for paid social overall, 0% year over year for meta. Um, so while meta spend was flat year over year, alternate measures show that the drop might not be quite so severe, that the, the net is still probably a little bit positive, um, which is what we see in their ad revenue numbers, which should be coming out next week. Um, but one of the, the things that I want to point out is that there's strong sequential growth, particularly in the lower funnel. And that suggests that this year over year number is related to, uh, both structure and seasonal tactics. You've heard me talk a lot about ODAX. I'm going to continue to talk about ODAX. Um, and then some of the upper funnel, lower funnel implications of that we'll talk about as well. But first, I want to talk about why I think that 0% number is maybe a little bit uh, a little bit off. If we apply a traditional kind of 80-20 rule to our accounts here, and we look at the top spending accounts that form the top 80% of spend versus everybody else that forms the bottom 20%. Across all social, it's a little bit closer between the top 80 and the, and the bottom 20 with the big spenders actually uh, growing a little bit faster. But if we just look at meta, that top 80% is actually a headwind. We actually see spending down year over year for that group. But then the balance of advertisers, we actually see up 5%. This suggests that there's a bit of a skew in our data. It's not a normal distribution. Um, so in order to correct for that, let's look at perhaps the median. So we take all of our, our, our accounts, find the one that's in the middle when, when we sort it by, uh, by overall year-over-year -year spending growth. When we do that, we see the all social actually increases. It goes up from plus 12 to plus 16. That's reflective of the fact that the, you know, the, the head is growing faster than the tail. Um, for meta, we actually see, first of all, all the numbers are higher. So we see plus 12% as our media, as our median last quarter, but then it only comes down to plus 9%. So still a deceleration, but still trending positive and not quite as severe of a deceleration. So all of these in total kind of paint a, a more comprehensive picture of what's going on for meta in particular. And we'll look at that in even more detail when we get to some of the upper funnel, lower funnel and campaign objective uh, changes over time. Again, unpacking our numbers here, we'll do it for both social and meta. We've got that plus five overall spend plus 0% you know, for, uh, for meta. But as we saw in the other channels, those prevailing price and volume trends reversed course. Um, here, we actually saw CPMs drop both at the overall level and for meta in particular, whereas in the other channels, we just saw them grow more slowly. Um, and this kind of opens up some of what we're seeing within uh, social publishers. And that is these do these things do, do move against each other, but it's rarely a one-to-one -one, uh, trade-off. So 
you know, we see this in the long-term view that one of them may be a little bit ahead of the other, and that can kind of can create a headwind or a tailwind in, in some quarters when we're looking at this from a high level. If we do our distribution, this is, I, I believe, a good resource for you as marketers to figure out where do I fit in all of this? I went up or down. Um, is that weird? You know, if you see the overall go up and you went down, well, is that weird? Well, no, because 38% of Sky Social advertisers actually saw a year over year decrease in spend of at least 5%. More of them went up than down, both 56% for both uh, quarter over quarter and year over year. But here, I'm also going to get very focused on that quarter over quarter CPM number. And here, uh, it's 38% saw a 5% or greater increase compared to last month or per, to last quarter. The same metric was 60% in Q2. So this is another bright flashing light that, you know, this price inflation environment that we've been in through the first half of the year does seem to be moderating. I, you know, if, if there's one message you take home from this hour, it's that, Price growth is price growth. Yeah, prices are not growing as much as they were before. Similar to what we're seeing in you know the overall consumer economy. Here are our numbers for those of you who like seeing the numbers in all their gory detail. Uh, but you can see in the quarter over quarter numbers, the dark blue bars on the right, impressions up twelve percent, clicks up sixteen percent, spend up thirteen percent. So this screams structural change to me because. Most of the structural changes happen over a longer period of time. And once they're all in market together, then the more real change happens in the shorter term. And we'll see this in uh, in detail on the lower funnel in a minute. As to why we saw some of that slowdown, a lot of it comes back down. We saw this a little bit in search, but the growth from uh, August to September this year was not nearly as robust as what it was last year. So you know, in both years, we saw a pretty decent increase from July to August. But then last year, we continued to see that from August to September. This year, not so much. So that kind of erased some of the gains that we were, you know, some people ask me for results earlier and uh, before the quarter's over, and I'll project off of July and August. Well, as you can guess, those projections were a little bit off because, you know, it, you can't see that coming until it happens, that, that slowdown from August to September. If we look at our key growth drivers for the overall channel, we see that the, the biggest impact on social spending came from upper and middle funnel strategies growing by 10% year over year compared to, or contributing 10% to the overall of plus 5% while uh, the lower funnel took back the balance. Um, and we also see consumer goods and retail actually pretty strong in terms of their contribution. And then the lower CPM'd uh, advertisers accounts actually drove spending uh, while moderate CPMs had it down. High CPMs were a little bit more mixed. We'll do this exercise for meta specifically later as well. But I want to talk about how that funnel stage has an impact in overall uh, the overall growth rates. And this is a little jumbled. I was kind of struggling to figure out how to represent this, but you know, even as, CPM, if you look on the left on our lower funnel, we see CPMs that are actually up six or 7%. Um, and we've talked about how lower funnel was kind of a big deal, particularly here at Sky. Um, but the volume of impressions dropped by quite a bit. So that kind of ends up being a drag on spend, even though CPMs are higher. Whereas the upper and middle funnel, you know, you see no change in CPM, but you see big growth in impressions. And what's more, those impressions are cheaper. So, you know, you see $3.89 for an upper middle funnel for a thousand impressions in the upper and middle funnel versus $8.45 for lower funnels. So you're kind of seeing high priced lower funnel impressions being replaced by lower priced upper and middle funnel impressions. And that's that creates a headwind for overall spending. It's also an opportunity for advertisers to work the upper and middle funnel um, or clearly evidence that they are working the upper and middle funnel. And, you know, even if you do see prices increasing and there are elements that we'll see where that's happening, um, it winds up not moving the needle in terms of overall spending. 
shift gears a little bit and talk about TikTok. Uh, we're not doing TikTok spending growth yet. Uh, hopefully soon as that, that uh, segment starts to stabilize over time. But, you know, two out of five of Sky accounts in our analysis are running TikTok ads. The total number has grown two thirds since last year. Um, spending levels, again, still volatile, but they are increasing. I can directionally say that for sure. Uh, but again, some of this reflects expanding Sky support for TikTok in combination to that market growth. So one of the reasons I don't like to go too far down this rabbit hole, because you know, the second I give you a hard number on how much spending has grown on TikTok, the government's going to step in and ban them. And then it's all going to be moot anyway, because it's like washing your car and, and then it rains. Turning back to Meta now, I want to talk about uh, the contribution to overall year over year change just for Meta. And here you really see how these growth factors offset each other. Um, you see sales and lead generation um, as campaign objectives are offsetting the deprecation we see in the conversions um, objectives. Reels and stories are up while feed is down. Um, you see link ads are up while carousel ads are down. And I think that actually does relate back to the stuff at the top where Advantage Shopping Campaigns Plus are up while Core Social is down. Um, Advantage shop Shopping, not as reliant on carousel ads as the historic uh, dynamic products ads have been. But let's talk about Advantage Shopping. Um, as expected, you know, I talked about this last quarter, you know, we hadn't seen a big jump in anything just yet, but the prevailing theory was as advertisers start to prepare for the holidays in Q3, we'd see that start to change. Now, spending did go up. Impressions did go up when we didn't see that in search. Why is that? Social is still very much top down. It's like when you put these campaigns in market, they're in market um, and spending. When you put them in market for search, they're in market, but they don't really start spending until people start searching. So here, I think we see a little bit more of uh, an upwards lift just by virtue of getting them in market. And I think we'll see a, another surge in Q4 last quarter or last year, rather, you can see that spending and impressions both doubled quarter over quarter for this, uh, this segment. And in terms of share, we see we are, you know, the, actually the share from Q2 to Q3 didn't change all that much. Um, and these growth rates are less than we've seen in previous reports because we're past that big first adoption event, which was Q3 of 2023. If we're talking about meta, we also want to talk about placements. Um, two different ways to look at it. First is by platform, so uh, Facebook or Instagram, and then by position, so your feeds, stories, and reels, and then by position first, and then by platform. So on the left, you can see Facebook down year over year somewhat, um, while Instagram is up. That's the prevailing trend we've seen pretty much across the board. Within Facebook, it's all stories and reels. In fact, reels is growing so fast, it blows my, my uh, horizontal axis there. But you can see it's actually up almost, uh, what is that, almost 5x. So always add one to it if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to go from percentage difference to a multiplier, but you know, it's a little, little insider math for you there on the Instagram side, um, feed also down stories and reels also up as well. So the same thing going on there. Then if we do it by position first, you can see feed down across the board stories and reels, both really up, um, year over year in terms of growth. As for how much of that is happening, where, at the overall level, first of all, we're still about two thirds Facebook and the balance Instagram. There's a little sliver of Messenger, some other stuff at the top. But then if you break it out by placement, you can see overall feed is still about 65% of spending. Uh, but for Facebook, it's much higher. It's up in the 80s. And then Instagram, much lower, down below 60% with stories and reels having a much larger impact there to the surprise of hopefully absolutely no one. What might be a surprise is that uh, for the last couple of quarters, CPMs on Instagram are actually higher than on Facebook. Uh, that's new. Um, we've seen we had seen a bit of a, a strong price difference historically, but that has not only gone away; it's actually reversed itself. Now, a lot of this we talked about how uh, we talked about this before about things getting replaced with lower priced things, and I think a lot of that is this has more to do with Facebook prices coming down 
because those expensive feed impressions are being replaced by lower priced real ads in terms of the overall impression volume. But then finally, I want to talk about that lower funnel thing, particularly on meta. If we look at several segments related to lower funnel activities, we look at dynamic product ads, the historical um, product ad type. If we look at sales objectives, so this is, if you're down in the weeds, this is outcome sales, um, but also historically relates back to the old product catalog sales um, objective. If you look at Advantage Shopping Campaigns Plus, uh, we know that's a shopping category. And then that broader category of lower funnel strategies, we do see sales objectives are up year over year, but that is because we're transitioning from um, the the legacy objectives to this ODAX framework. ASC obviously is a new thing, you know, new small things grow fast, but all of these are showing a considerable velocity quarter over quarter. Um, so given what we saw last year with the lower funnel, with social, this kind of screams out that, you know, the lower funnel is going to come home again in Q4 and we'll see that growth there. And it's showing that real seasonality within, uh, within social and also speaks to why our numbers are the way they are, because we do see this, you know, growth in the upper funnel where we're maybe not playing as much versus in the lower funnel. And then the lower funnel will really kind of come home to roost in Q4. So putting this on the big board, um, you do see that similar thing where, you know, it's a trade-off between impressions and CPM as the dark blue bars go up, go above the axis, the CPM bars go below the axis. Now they're all, they're kind of smaller in, in size overall. I think some of those big swings you saw, um, in the last, you know, in late 2022 and early 2023 had to do with that transition from, you know, to reels and to ODAX from, uh, ODAX, once again, outcome-driven ad experiences versus the legacy campaign objectives. And then let's look at our long-term uh, as well. You can see that CPM is actually low relative to the peaks seen in late 2021, 2022. Overall channel spending up 4x since Q1 of 2019. Um, the new publishers we added to the social analysis came in in Q4 of 2023, but they didn't really change the game all that much in aggregate, which is encouraging. So we're kind of at time. So let me wrap up real quickly. Um, the steady increase in ad prices does seem to have ended. Prices are either growing more slowly or even starting to retreat. Now, despite this, spending continues to grow across channels. Some individual publishers may vary, particularly meta, but there, there seem to be seasonal, tactical, and structural factors that help explain those results where we didn't see as robust growth. And quarter-over-quarter quarter growth looks strong heading into the holiday season. Retail media continues its steady upward growth, outpacing the other channels, and Amazon in particular has started to expand up the purchase funnel with its DSP offerings. So with that, I'm going to venture over and see if we have any questions. Um, obviously, if you don't have... Da -da -da. One question, how much shift are you seeing in spend between social platforms year over year? Unfortunately, that's a difficult thing to parse out from our particular view. I don't know how much, you know, I don't know how much things move. I don't know what the total budget was. So it's hard to say that just because something's not being spent um, in publisher A, that it's being spent on publisher B. So I'm sorry, I can't really, can't really get at that one. And once again, I would remind you that if you go into the chat, um, it should still be visible. Um, you can download the slides we're talking about, but they'll also come back. You'll get those via email uh, tomorrow. I'm going to leave it open for just another second to see if anyone else has any more questions because we are at time. There's half of a question. Anyway, you can hit me at chris.costello at sky.io um, if you have anything that I didn't get to. Um, I think somebody hit return. Oh, you know what it was? It's probably you hit return. Oh, how much of it is driven by higher CPM increases? Ah, the AI question. Uh, the the decline in paid search, I, I don't know that AI is having a material effect um, in part because the transition from smart shopping to performance max is having such a drastic effect. 
So any in, any marginal impact that that AI results have is being crowded out at the margins. Now, you know, Google has announced they're going to start showing ads a bit more embedded in those AI content overviews. Um, so we may see some something go on with that. I do get where you're where you're coming from on this. Um, when you think of AI responses on results pages, it can increase the number of what we call zero click searches in the business. And if it's a zero click search, then you get your answer and you're done. So you don't necessarily have that same inflection point in your uh, behavior as a searcher where you're going to go on to click on a link that you see. But you know there are a lot of there are a lot of different levers here with AI. Um, one is which searches are monetizable, which which are just more informational, which are kind of you know cheap parlor tricks as well. I'm, I'm not saying they all are. I'm just saying there's a segment of them that are. Um, so I think we're still, we're not going to, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a cop out, but we won't see an impact from that until we see an impact from that. And I don't think we're seeing it yet because there are enough other things moving to, uh, to change that game. But thank you for your question. I think I'm going to cut. Uh, da, da, da. And that's similar to the follow-up was how does, Google search generative experience in that conversion or oh, conversion rates is a whole different thing. I'll take it up with you uh, afterwards, but definitely hit me up on email. Um, we can talk about it then because we are running over just a bit. So let's talk about our additional resources one more time. Um, you see sky.io slash sky dash research dash center. Um, and we've got Amazon big deal days up there. We'll have a summary report of everything we just talked about that will be posted next week. Um, if you're on our mailing lists or follow us on LinkedIn, I'm sure you will see information about how to get that. And then some of our other stuff there. Um, once again, my name is Chris Costello, Senior Director of Marketing Research at Sky. I would like to thank you all for taking time out of your very busy days as we start to move into, into holiday season. And uh, we'll chat again in about three months and talk about how the holidays went. How does that sound to you guys? I hope it's, uh, I look forward to it. I hope to talk to you again then. Thank you very much. Have a great day.